Hello everyone, it's me again, Serenity Star, and finally I'm back with a video games talk, yes. And uh, some of you know that I am filming a Let's Play series of the newest King's Quest, uh, King's Quest 2015, and uh, I told you guys that I would make a video games video featuring King's Quest. So I would like to do that today. But still, don't worry for those of you who are not that into King's Quest. I have played many other games. I made a list and you can see it's a long list of games I've played and my opinions about them. Most of those games I liked, or at least uh, I will not talk much about the games I did not like. Just to give you a little overview of the games I will in the future talk about that are not King's Quest. Um, and many of you, many of those games have actually been suggested by some of you. And in the video I'll talk about these games. I will uh, thank you and give the names of the people who suggested um, each game, if you don't mind. So I am going to be talking about Life is Strange, Anna and Harvey, part one and two, the Dreamfall chapters, and this is a whole new story I will have to talk about because in my first video games talk um, I'll put the link here I said that I did not like the first game which was called um, The Longest Journey and I played that game again and I totally changed my mind so forget everything I said in this video about The Longest Journey then Outlast, a horror game, and Day of the Tentacle Remastered. Uh, actually, I'm not going to talk much about that game because this is also a game I have a Let's Play series going on. Here's the link to that. Yeah, but today, as I said, we are featuring King's Quest. There are nine parts of King's Quest, though the last one, the 2051, which I put the link to my Let's Play series here, um, it has no number like King's Quest 1, King's Quest 2, and so on. It's just like, it is um, recounting the whole story from part 1 to 7. I'd say, um, from the perspective of King Graham. So, but first things first, let's start with King's Quest 1. Uh, let's just, let's just give basic information. So, King's Quest is made by Sierra and the 2015 version now um, is uh, in cooperation with the odd gentleman just so we get that so king's quest one 
is called Quest for the Crown, and this is the first adventure of King Graham. King Edward calls his bravest knight, Graham, to find three legendary treasures to end Daventry's troubles, and if he succeeds, he will become king. So you see that the new King's Quest, King's Quest uh, 2015, um, begins where the f kind of before um, King's Quest 1, Quest for the Crown, because we see um, what happens before Graham becomes a knight. Uh, King's Quest 1 starts with Graham already being a knight and going on the quest to find the lost treasures of Daventry's, of Daventry, which are, uh, if I'm not mistaken, of course, the magic mirror. Then there's some uh, kind of treasure chest with an endless fortune in it and so on. Oh, and then there's this shield uh, to protect Daventry endlessly. And in King's Quest 2015, we actually get a glimpse, a small glimpse of uh, Graham the Knight recovering one of those lost treasures, which is the magic mirror. So the first, so the game starts with Graham being a knight, recovering the magic mirror from the dragon. And then we see what happened before, how Graham became a knight in the first place. And then we go over to part two. And in chapter two, Rebel Without a Cause, um, some problems the young King Graham encountered during his young kingship. Okay, then let's get to King's Quest number two, Romancing the Throne. Sir Graham has become the new king of Daventry. Then the magic mirror shows him a vision about a beautiful young woman named Valanese in captivity on top of an ivory crystal tower. He travels to Colima to rescue her from the witch Hegatha who imprisoned her. He must travel through sea, air and death to gain the keys to unlock the door to the enchanted realm. So, in chapter 3 of the New King's Quest 2015, called uh, Once Upon a Climb, the story is kind of retold, but um, a little differently and more detailed. In King's Quest to Romancing the Throne, the game focused totally on Graham's adventure to get to the tower. And then in the end of the game, he manages to open the tower and rescue the princess Valanese from uh, Hagatha. This is kind of it. So in chapter 3, ro uh, not romancing the throne, but once upon a climb, the part of the adventure to finding the keys to open the enchanted realm of Kalima and um, the whole adventure to finally get to the enchanted tower is a little bit skipped, is scratched only on the surface in the game. So we see some 
uh, some screens where he passes through uh, some Wetzel wolves and so on, but this adventure is skipped because it is already in Romancing the Throne. In chapter 3, Once Upon a Climb, the story focuses on how Graham meets his princess and how they fall in love and how actually they manage to escape Hagatha. And I have to say, this chapter is my absolute favorite because it was really, really unexpected to me to uh, find two princesses in the tower being held captive and you having to choose one of them and make them like you and so on. And it's also very interesting to me to find out more about Hagatha because she turned out not to be an evil witch, but her story is kind of sad and in Romancing the Throne we did not find out about any of this. Then we come to King's Quest 3. To Air is Human. And this is the first King's Quest game not focusing on King Graham's adventures, but on his sons, Prince Alexander's. King's Quest 3 To Air is Human. The story moves away from Daventry and King Graham to the land of Ludor, where a boy named Gwydion is kept by the wicked wizard Mananan. Gwydion, 17 years old, has been held captive for as long as he can remember. One day, when Mananan leaves for a short while, Gwydion escapes. Fate leads him to Daventry, where he rescues a beautiful princess from a three-headed dragon. At some point, it turns out that Gwydion is in fact King Graham's son, who had been kidnapped from Daventry as a baby. The princess he rescued turned out to be his sister, Rosella. So, in King's Quest 3 to Ares Human, we get to see um, Prince Alexander's alias Gwydion, how he escapes the evil wizard Mananan by um, mixing a lot of magical ingredients together and uh, putting them into a sort of cookie that transforms the wizard Mananan into a cat. And uh, this is actually mentioned in the New King's Quest, a 2015 version. Mm. In King's Quest 2015, the fourth chapter, uh, Snow Plays Like Home, we see how uh, Prince Alexander is being kidnapped by Mananan. And what totally blew my mind is that Manny, who was uh, our ally in the quest to becoming a knight. Um, you have to watch chapter 2, Rubble Without a Cause, to understand it better. But it totally blew my mind that Manny is actually Mananan, the evil wizard, who kidnapped Prince Alexander as a baby, and in King's Quest 2015, we see how that happens, and it is so sad how Graham is so desperate to finding his son, and you see the years passing, but he never giving up on his son. Um, and then we see one day Prince Alexander just stands in front of the door, and is back. So the whole adventure 
to how Prince Alexander managed the Devon tree, we can see in uh, Two Eras Human. What kind of makes me a little curious is in King's Quest 3, as you just heard, um, Prince Alexander rescues a princess from a three-headed dragon uh, and this princess turned out to be his sister Rosella. But in King's Quest 2015, they all go together on, yeah, on a vacation and end up trapped in a tower. But not only Rosella, but also Valenice uh, are in danger there. And Graham and Alexander rescue both of them, them together, but never from a three-headed dragon. So uh, I kind of wonder if they meant that Rosella was in trouble before and Alexander managed to rescue her, but there's really no sign of this in the game, so I kind of uh, wonder what uh, what's the deal there. Then we get to King's Quest 4. The Perils of Rosella. And in The Perils of Rosella, again, the game does not focus on Graham, but this time, on Graham's other child, Rosella. King Graham has suffered a heart attack and is on the brink of death. Rosella goes on a quest to find a cure for her father, which leads her to the land of Tamir. During her quest to find the magic fruit that can cure him, she also rescues a cursed prince named Edgar. So, um, this time, featuring Rosella, um, she goes again to a different country, which is not Daventry, to find a magic fruit that can cure her father. This magic fruit is actually briefly mentioned in King's Quest 2015 when the old Graham sits in his bag and says that he's craving some magic fruit. This is a small little easter egg referring to that game, to the magic fruit Rosella found for him. Important here is that Edgar guy that Rosella rescues in the end. In the game, this Edgar um, was enchanted and uh, looked kind of like the hunchback of Notre Dame. So very ugly, uh, his body in weird shape and so on. But still Rosella rescues him and in the end he turns into this beautiful prince and then vanishes like they go on separate ways. Okay, prince Edgar goes to nobody knows where. He says he's going back to his kingdom but we don't know where this kingdom is. And uh, Rosella goes back home with the magic fruit and fortunately cures her father with the magic fruit. Um, and in the game King's Quest 2015 there is no mention whatsoever of that story beside of that easter egg of craving the magic fruit. So let's get right to King's Quest 5. Absence makes the heart go yonder. The castle of Daventry is enchanted by Mordak, 
an evil wizard. King Graham wasn't in the castle, so he sees it vanishing right before his eyes. Mordek turns out to be the brother of Mananen, who had captured his son Prince Alexander, alias Gwydion, and has taken the royal family captive out of revenge. King Graham has to go to Serenia to save them. During the captive, Prince Alexander meets Princess Cosima, a fellow captive of Mordax. So this time, the game again focuses on Graham. You play Graham again, rescuing his family. And um, we have some references of this adventure in King's Quest 2015. But this adventure happens after Chapter 4, um, Snow Plays Like Home. So in between Chapter 4 and 5, this adventure happens and um, there is not not an actual hint as to that this happens, but we find out in King's Quest 2015, since Mordek is uh, Mananen's brother, that he is actually in King's Quest 2015, since there is many, and then there's also the other guy, uh, what's his name again? Mordon, I think. Mordon, if I'm not mistaken. So I mentioned before that the goblins have this prank thing uh, that they reenact a lot of fairy tales and pranks. And once they reenacted this prank called the baby swap, so they swapped a human baby with a goblin baby. And that goblin baby was Manny. And the human baby was Mordon. So Mordon grew up kind of as a slave in the goblin world. And Manny grew up in the human world. And Manny, as we already know, um, turned out to be later on the dark wizard Mananen. Ergo, his brother Mordon is the dark wizard Mordak who, as we all know, um, does all these evil stuff because Manny, or Mananen, tells him so. So, um, and there's another easter egg in the game where Graham says, oh, let's go on an adventure, maybe we could go see Serenia someplace and Serenia is the place Graham goes to rescue his family. But besides uh, from that we see no other mentions of that game. Then we come to King's Quest V. Air today, gone tomorrow. And in this game again we focus on Prince Alexander not King Graham. Prince Alexander is haunted by his memories of Princess Cosima. Then one day, the magic mirror shows him a vision of her, and he sails out to find her. Finally arriving on the shore of the Isle of the Crown, Alexander learns that Cosima is in peril and explores all the land of the Green Isles to rescue her. So, um, there 
is not much about this adventure mentioned in King's Quest 2015, but we know that King, that Prince Alexander in the end married Kasima and is living there with her. So, um, the heir of Daventry decided not to inherit uh, the kingdom of, Ga of Daventry, but to go live in on the Green Isles, specifically on the island of the Crown with Cosima, and they have a little daughter, Gwendolyn, the little girl in the game, who the old Graham tells his stories to. And then we come to my favorite part and the first adventure game I ever, ever played. So, uh, I will talk a little more about this game. I will never forget when I first played this game. I was at a friend's house and I don't know, in this, this was a time where I don't know, I think I was maybe 11 or 12 years old and I kind of started with the computer thing and there did not exist so many games and at least to my knowledge at that time. And then we went playing in uh, the office of her father's office and she put in that game, King's Quest 7, and we started playing it and we couldn't solve a single riddle, it was so frustrating, but I desperately wanted to keep on trying, but she lost interest and turned it off. Um, this game starts in a desert and you have to solve a lot of riddles, and then I was obsessed with that game. She would not turn that game on again, because it was boring to her. But to me, I got obsessed and I kept begging my father to buy me that game until finally he did. And then I was like, there did not yet exist walkthroughs on the internet. I mean, internet. I don't even know if we had internet back then. And YouTube did not exist yet. So there is no cheating and it took me forever to finish that game really over a year because I got stuck so so many times on the riddles and even today I think that this game is difficult to solve but still I loved every second of it and then when you finally manage to solve a puzzle after such a long time this feeling I don't know nowadays with all the solutions, we can always get all the hints and stuff. Uh, we don't experience that anymore. At least this is my opinion. So, King's Quest Seven, The Princeless Bride. Grow up, young lady. That's what they all say it's time to settle down put childish things away aren't you happy thrilled delighted you're going to be a bride yes i'm so excited i want to run and I wanna go to a land beyond dreams Where everything's new Not really what it seems Enchantment adventure are waiting for me 
Princess Rosella has come to an age where she should marry, as her mother, Valenice, tells her relentlessly. But Rosella doesn't want to know about marriage, she wants adventures. While looking into the garden's pond, she sees a magic creature jumping out of it, leaving behind an image of a castle in the clouds. Rosella dives into the pond to reach that castle, and Valenice, in shock, jumps in after her. They get caught in a huge magical vortex and become separated from each other. Rosella is snatched out of the vortex by the Troll King. Valenice lands in the desert in the realm of Eldritch. Rosella and Valenice try to reach each other, but keep missing each other all the time. Everything turns out to be a plot by the evil witch Malicia, who wants to become the ruler of Eldritch. In the end, Rosella reaches the castle in the clouds she'd seen in the pond and rescues the prince ruling there. This prince turns out to be Prince Edgar, who she had already rescued in King's Quest VI and they get married. So, this is an awesome game, really. I like everything about it. Maybe there's one small little detail. I don't like about the King's Quest games in general, is that you can die, and you know that I'm not very fond of that in games, that you can die. I don't know, I prefer, at least in adventure games, I prefer um, that you cannot die. Like in the new King's Quest 2015, it's not a problem, because when you die, you just start right off at the place you died right before that. But uh, in the earlier King's Quest games, like every other game, that is that ancient, um, you had to make sure to save all the time, because once you died, you would start on the last saving point. And sometimes this caused me some trouble in the past. So um, again, in King's Quest 2015, there is not a mention of this game. Um, the only thing we know is that Rosella actually married King Edward and that they live in Devontree today and they have a son, Gart, the blonde boy in King's Quest 2015, planning on being the heir of the kingdom. Then we come to the last of the King's Quest series that is numbered, which is King's Quest VIII, Mask of Eternity. Boy, what to tell you about this game. Looking at it just as a game outside of the King's Quest series, it is a game that is very good. I enjoyed it a lot. It's very mysterious, very dark, and has good riddles, a lot of different worlds to explore, and yada yada yada. But looking at it as a part of the King's Quest series, I think that it was awful. It had nothing to do with King's Quest anymore, in my opinion. The feeling was totally different. Um, let me just tell you what it's about and then I give you more of my opinions. While King Graham and his minister 
are talking about the everyday affairs, the magic mirror activates, showing them how the mask of eternity is being destroyed in the realm of the sun. Then the mirror shows the only person who can rescue them, the lowly peasant and knight Connor of Daventry, the only person not turned into stone by the destruction of the mask. Connor now goes on his quest to reach the realm of the sun, find all pieces of the mask of eternity to restore it. So, as I said, great game. Really good. Um, I really enjoyed playing it, but as a part of the King's Quest series, it disappointed me deeply because I think they did that because at that time, this whole ego shooter game thing became huge. Um, everybody wanted to fight and kill and who knows what. So King's Quest VIII is not a point and click game anymore. So you have to walk around and you have to fight. So there are enemies in form of zombies, monsters, trolls and whatnot, and you have to kill them and you can die. Like the whole stuff, you can find potion to restore your health and you need to take care of your health and so on. So there are riddles to solve, but it is a lot of fighting in this game. Uh, and um, the whole feeling of King's Quest is not there. Like, you feel that this is an entirely different game. And even this Mask of Eternity thing, not very King's Quest-y, to say so. And I know that this is not only my opinion, this game was totally destroyed in the critics at that time. I did not find it that bad as they, as they said it would be. Because as a single game, it was good. But... Uh, so I, I don't like to count this game into the King's Quest series and I guess this is also why there is no mention at all of it in the King's Quest 2015 game because, I don't know, it, it does not fit into the story at all. Yeah, so... Uh, the last chapter of King's Quest 2015, which is called... Oh, I forgot what it's called. I'll look it up and put the name here. Um, the last chapter is After All These Adventures 1 to 7, and we see how King Graham ends and what happens after him. I really, 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 really loved King's Quest 2015. It's so funny. It's It has the King's Quest feel to it. Though, maybe it's even a little too funny for the King's Quest series, but I love how they... Um, yeah, how they created King Graham. Really, I, I really liked it. And those of you who've watched my other video game talks um, know that I am a sucker <laughs> for those telltale games or telltale games or I don't know how you call it, where you make different decisions and according to the decision you make, the game takes different courses and this makes me play the game over and over again with different decisions because I want to know what happens 
um, depending on the decision I made. Um, but this is really a kind of a kind of style I really love that decision making stuff because it really gives you the feeling that your decisions matter and not that you have to stuck to uh, yeah kind of uh, to the book to the course it has to take you just trigger things you know you decide what will happen and I really love that so if you are interested on seeing more of King's Quest 2015 have a look at my Let's Play um, playlist and watch it. At the moment I am only at chapter 3, but uh, once a week, once or twice a week usually I post um, another video, so um, it should be over soon. <laughs> um, yeah. So, I really hope you enjoyed this video, since many of you were asking to finally have a new video, Games Talk, so here it is, and there's another one coming, as I told you in the beginning. I hope you found this relaxing enough. I know when I talk about video games, I get so excited that sometimes it's hard for me to remain calm and give you that feeling of relaxation, but I hope I could manage it still, and um, yeah, I hope to see you next time.